Hello my friends and welcome to Flying Circus Models. In this video I will show you how I make a rigging on my World War I models. Uh, during that period of time planes had a lot of different types of uh, anchor points, turnbuckles, uh, the rigging was uh, different as well. Uh, with one wire, double wired, uh, different diameters of wires and so on. Right now, many modelers use various of techniques when they do the rigging. For example, they use cotton sticks, heat them and pull, so they get a small plastic tubes. I prefer to do it in a different way. So, uh, what you will need to have uh, to make a rigging in my way. Good angled tweezers, scissors, triangle file, the wire for the rigging, Usually I use 0.2 mm in diameter black beading thread. A super glue, a copper wire, can be from, one, uh, from 0 0.15 to 0 0.2 mm. Instead of cotton sticks, uh, I use medical needles. Uh, you can use uh, copper tubes uh, as well. Needle cones uh, have uh, different colors uh, depending on their outer diameter. For example, green is 0.8 mm, blue 0.6, yellow 0.5 mm. In my, in my opinion, uh, there is no point to use smaller or bigger sizes. Also, you will need a small drill bead. Usually I use 0.4 mm. For anchor points and turnbuckles, uh, you can use photo edge parts uh, that uh, you can find in some kits. However, they look too flat and uh, not realistic to me. Also, you can buy some aftermarket parts, like these uh, resin anchor points from Gaspatch models, or a metal turnbuckle with a flat end or an anchor point. At the same time, you can make your own turnbuckles uh, using a technique that I will show you later. However, it's a very time-consuming process and uh, if you want, uh, you can buy resin or metal uh, turnbuckles instead. I recommend to buy metal ones because resin parts are way too fragile. Here you can see how they look like uh, on the tail section of my De Havilland 2 model. I use one uh, 48 scale parts because they look more up to the scale rather than 132. To make an anchor point, you need to cut a copper wire for one, one and a half centimeter long and twist it around a drill bit.
It depends on the plane. Sometimes you will need to make more than 100 of them. Sometimes just around 20. Again, it depends on the plane, uh, but in the vast majority of cases, I use a 0.6 millimeter needle to make turn buckles or imitation of cable clamps. You will need to cut them using a triangle file, and again, you might need them a lot. If a strut or tube doesn't have uh, a room to drill a hole and put an anchor point, uh, you can use a piece of needle, glue a copper wire circle to it, and uh, glue everything to a strut. In the same way, you can make a turnbuckle, just add a second copper circle and uh, your turnbuckle is ready. To add the anchor points, uh, you need to use original plans and based on the real plane, uh, you can drill small holes and glue copper anchor points into them. Usually I use original pictures, plans from Winsdoc uh, data files to find uh, an exact uh, location and where I should drill holes. 0.4mm drill will be enough uh, for the vast majority of your projects. The rigging process is pretty straightforward, all you need is uh, patience and patience again. You need to take a piece of needle, put a thread uh, through it, then uh, through the anchor point and back to a needle piece. Here comes our super glue, just a small drop to fix a needle piece and the thread. After 1-2 minutes you can put the thread through the second needle and repeat all steps on another end.
when you have such a flexible structure like on the Havilland 2 tail I recommend you to be very very careful and not to over tight your rigging because it can bend tubes and the whole tail. In the same way, you can make the interior brace wires for any other model, like I did on Fokker D2, Nuper 17 and other my projects. Absolutely in the same way, we can do the rigging for any other type of the World War I plane. You can add rigging between wind struts. Sometimes it's not very comfortable, so you will need to be creative in the way how to put model, what rigging to do first, and in general in what order you want to do it. If you have a biplane, I always recommend you to do the rigging in this way. One line on the left side, second on the right side, third on the left, fourth on the right side, and so on. In doing so, you will be sure that uh, your top and bottom wings are even and uh, you do not uh, over tight one side. Always check, uh, because you don't want to finish all your rigging and then find out that your upper wing is not aligned with the bottom one, so you will need to redo this again.
In the same way, I made rigging on my other projects that you can find on my channel. For example, Albatross D1 or Siemens Shocker D3. One more advantage of this technique is that your model will have not a huge, of course, but some strength, so you can take it for upper wind without a fear. As you can see, the rigging process is not a hard one. You just need a bit of patience, right tools, and you can easily do it. As usual, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, press that like button and leave your comments below. It really helps me in the promoting of my channel and I want to know what you think about my builds. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episodes.